you've got to you've got to think through because I know you're not going to have any money for the next uh, two seasons. We talk about uh, where we're in right now. We have a freeze on that we put on before the school even opened, and we've got next year and the following year, and things don't not look good for either of us. Nancy had her hand up. Uh, no, uh, Jerry answered my question. Oh, okay. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see Pat Neal and then Dr. Just alternate Pat. Well, if you think about the enrollment, I mean, it really is key because when the county, when we peaked in the 70s, or I think 72 is when we peaked after the post World War II baby boom, we peaked at 127,000 students. Then we bottomed out at 90,000, and that's when the county closed 60 five schools throughout the county. I mean, at that point, then the growth was more in the up county outer areas. Our enrollment, I mean, it, to wit, the BCC cluster and the moratorium, it's not an area where you have massive development. And it is an area, you know, we, down county, we have reclaimed some schools and reopened them. I mean, Sergeant Shriver and the Wheaton cluster. and. Um, you know, A. Mario Loiterman had been closed. You know, we have reclaimed <coughs> schools, but it, the enrollment, the resurgence, the part of the market share, all are contributing factors, and it's not just growth from new <coughs> construction. It's children moving into communities, existing mature communities. That's Bethesda, that's Silver Spring. So, I mean, we need to stay on top or catch up. Um, you know, the portable situation, we had been at over 700, I think it was 735. We were down to 400. Our, our plans have been to cut back on that, even, and we're not going to be able to do that without the adequate resources. And it's not just at that point. Roger was next. Staying with that same theme, I wanted to get a little clarification from you with respect to the timing of your CIP. October goes to the board. President Board and the board will have a chance to hold hearings on it and do whatever amendments <coughs> they feel necessary after listening to the public, and then they will forward it to you and <coughs> send it by the. We'll send it to the county executive, and the county executive then will. <coughs> January it to you. But we're uh, already <coughs> talking to the county executive about the size, the magnitude, and the issues. I mean, we do have to address issues with the growth policy. Yes. And I didn't know if you were going to be doing that in the context I will of be doing it in the, the time CIP. frame in which we are taking up the growth policy. Well, I would hope that you would think about reconciling that time frame with at least my introduction time frame in October. And because then you'll see that <coughs> what there I'm is putting a there is will, then some, some commitment, commitment right. that is being made. Yeah. Thank you. The commitment to being made. And, uh, Let me ask you Because I think we can have, um, I think it's a real opportune time right now. Mm -hmm. I hear that and mm -hmm. grateful to you. With respect to White Flint, which is another issue that all of us will be grappling with, one of the pieces of conversation that has many people in the community nervous relates to the schools. Right. Mm -hmm. And justifiably so. That's mm -hmm. So my question to you is what is it that you can tell the community that is concerned? One, there are a lot of people that are hoping that Rocking Horse would be reopened. There are other people that are concerned about the impact on Walter Johnson and the potential for redistricting. What is, and these aren't issues that, unless I'm mistaken, we're going to be able to address definitively when we take up White Flint because these are issues that will play out over many years over time. The people are nervous about them at a time when we are making decisions about White Flint. <coughs> well, can you tell people? Yeah, Rocking that? Horse is not, um, I mean, I have it under consideration, but it's certainly. Uh, doesn't have the particulars that I would want because it's outside of and it would cause a tremendous realignment and it is highly utilized right now is our center. 
so the question becomes under what conditions in the current uh, situation can we have adequate facility land, if you will, or uh, <coughs> work with uh, other agencies together to place a building in a proper location that would fit within that uh, current uh, attendance area <coughs> and would serve the needs of the kids. And that is uh, what we will work closely with your staff and we'll work closely with the whole master plan thing to try to figure out. Uh, but I don't, I haven't come to any conclusion that Rocking Horse would be a viable alternative. Okay, so that's, you know, in my recommendation. I've looked at it, looked at it, looked at it, and it's just really hard to make it a viable alternative. I think the best thing for that whole area is to try to find some location within that area that would service as a place to build a facility. And that's what we're taking a look at. And so far, we've not had anybody uh, provide us with uh, a good alternative on that. My understanding is the planning board yeah. looked at several options yeah. and concluded that they weren't good alternatives. Yeah, they, <laughs> so in the absence of you coming up with something that they weren't able to bring about, it doesn't does look hard. Look hard. Because I, I, you know, I'm sorry, we're, we're just not going to. We, we would be solving one problem and creating two more, I'm afraid. And I think for the long term good of the county, we have to think holistically about how we make that work. And that's, you know, that's, that's a problem. Because the rocking horse is in an area that is also growing. And they get nudged out in that race. <laughs> <coughs> Before I give up my time, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't congratulate you also on the opening of the Bells Mill. Yeah, wasn't uh, that great? Oh my goodness, the yeah. community there is so pleased with it. <coughs> it also had a lot of green in it as well, and the community is very happy. So congratulations to you. I was so proud of the board and, and the council for naming a school uh, with the Shriver High School. Icon of the uh, community, Sarge and Mrs. Schreiber, and uh, she was there for that dedication, and the whole family was there for that dedication. And uh, I'm just really pleased that Gibbs has got a name on it, Roscoe Nix has got a name on it, Sergeant Schreiber's got a name on it. That took a great deal of courage for your board because there's lots of uh, people that would like to name people, uh, name things after rivers and lakes and boundaries and stuff like that. They're, they're really going after it. They started with Mar uh, Matsunaga. I think that says a lot about the community. Valerie, a <coughs> comment question. Yeah, I just wanted to piggyback on something that Pat O'Neill said earlier about um, what's happening in the county in that we're seeing this growth in the student population, but not necessarily from, from new development. And we've been seeing this trend happening for a while, and now it's in Bethesda and Chevy Chase and other areas of the county outside of uh, City <coughs> Spring and the Down County. And I, I think there's an opportunity coming up in the 2010 census to work very closely with the school system, I believe, because I just, I just saw a map yesterday of areas of the county where uh, there's anticipated to be uh, undercounting. And a lot of it is in these very areas where what you have now is multi-generational families living in a house. They weren't there before, those children weren't there before. So I think we have a really great opportunity to count because we benefit and those families benefit if we count it right. So I was wondering what you're doing uh, in We're conjunction. We're working very closely. I was with the census people yesterday. Uh, they claim the number is about $14,000 for every person you find. Mm -hmm. I like that. That sounds good. <laughs> because that is uh, something that you get aid for, the counties, everything is figured that way. And historically, we have been um, underground compared to the state. And I think uh, we're going to try to work with the Census Bureau, uh, try to work with the takers, 